Hmm, happy sunshine, family. Picking up where we left off in the Knoxville Grand Jury Transcript. Parker Still is on the stand. And <clears throat> just to catch you back up, uh, the juror was asking uh, a question uh, about the phone call. So what was the date on that phone call? The date on the... Is that not July 7th? And then Cynthia Davidson says, it was either July 6th or July 7th because the transfer was made on July 7th and the money was taken on the on July 6th. And then Parker saying, <clears throat> and I think that, I think the actual phone call though, Miss Davidson, I think that occurred on July. Again, I'm, this is, I'm not. I'm looking at my notes, but I think it occurred on July 10th, is what I remember from the posting. Would be that, because actually, when we picked up the motorhome, when we picked the motorhome up, it was at Buddy Greg. That's my understanding. And the juror says, at his residence? Ma'am? At his residence? No, ma'am. It was still at the dealership. He was in the driver's seat. Yes, ma'am. With the engine running. Th this is... This is rehearsed testimony here. <clears throat> That's what it feels like. So, he never did take it home. I don't... I don't know if he took it home or I know as a buddy Greg for some additional services. So I'm not sure if he took it home, you know, on that July 7th and then brought it back on on the that Monday. But I know that it was there when we when we arrested him. Yes, ma'am. Then Mrs. Davidson, did you attempt to get buddy Greg to not transfer the motorhome to him? Interesting question. We, it was not personally on those calls, Miss Davidson. One of our, I believe it was one of task force officers were, so I didn't personally. Wow, again, he doesn't, he doesn't, no, and he's... If this was his case, he would know the answer to this question. When you were investigating Randall Bean, did you talk with Buddy Greg and try to get him to not transfer the motorhome to Randall Bean? That's a pretty easy question. If you're investigating this case, you'd know if that happened, and you'd know who it was that did it. <clears throat> at all the departments that I worked at, when I was the lead officer on any case, I was the boss. It didn't matter who came up to me. If we were working on an investigation, it was my responsibility to delegate jobs to everybody else if they were going to help me out, even if they were a sergeant. It's, it was my responsibility as the lead investigator to coordinate the investigation. If I asked somebody to do something for me, I'd write it down in my notes. I would look for a supplemental report from that officer before he left at the end of his shift that day. <clears throat> so for Parker still to have a response like he does on line 17 through 19, this doesn't make any sense to me. We, it, it was not personally on those calls. It, meaning, meaning I, Ms. Davidson, one of our, I believe it was one of task force officers were. 
So I didn't personally. Yeah, that that's... He's not the lead investigator if you can't answer this question, guys. Do you know what happened in the... I know they were just kind of keeping us abreast of the situation. Just kind of keeping us abreast. We... It's my understanding, again, relayed to me from another officer who... That, yes, you know, they were... That Buddy Greg was going to let us know when he was essentially leaving, you know, because, you know, they, they didn't stop him or anything. They weren't going to stop him. They were just, they did give us a heads up, is my understanding. Is, they did, they did give us a heads up, is my understanding. He was present at the arrest, right? How, how did he know to go out there? He's the lead investigator on a case, and he goes out to this Buddy Greg motorhome dealership to arrest Randall Bean. He went out there at a specific day, at a specific time. It's his understanding that they they did give us a heads up. He he would know that he would be the one they'd be calling. Wow. A question from the juror. Again, the statements in the video that suggest she was aware that she was involved in the money laundering. Did her statements in that video she posted suggest she was? <clears throat> And Parker cuts her off. Statement. Statements that she didn't. And the jurors says, well, that suggested to you as a witness that she. And then he cuts her off again. That the. When I look at the conversations with Buddy Greg and then the second conversation that she has, I mean. With the information she puts out, that to me shows knowledge that this, where the source funds were. When you assist in that, when you assist in a transaction of that type, to me that is, that's money laundering to a T. Oh God, no. So the juror is asking if Heather Ann Tucci's statements in the video suggest that she was involved in money laundering. And Parker cuts this juror off twice. The juror can't really get the full question out. And then this is not how you testify uh, as to whether or not actions fit a crime. Uh, what you would say is, well, the U.S. Uh, criminal statute number whatever is commonly referred to as the money laundering statute, but it has several elements of the crime that must be present. They are points one, two, three, four, whatever they are. And, and then you talk about the observations that you found during the course of your investigation that lead you to believe that every one of those elements of the crime is present. It's a very objective and cut and dry type of testimony. What we have here is more garbage, guys. To me, that is, that's money laundering to a T. You don't, you don't say this. You say, well, to have a money laundering uh, crime, there are, what, three elements. One, two, three, here they are. Heather Antucci, show, I made observations A, B, C. 
And based on those observations, all the elements of the crime were met according to the statute. <laughs> That's money laundering to a T. This is just, hey, I'm a superhero. I'm FBI agent. I talk in confusing jargon to make the jury feel stupid and confused and don't offer any real testimony at all. This is really poor. He's this this person testifying is not a financial crimes expert. He probably hasn't even investigated any financial crimes. That's what it that's what it feels like. Oh, oh, look at this. Here comes the prosecuting attorney to the rescue. And remember the elements of a conspiracy to commit money laundering is simply one that you agree with someone else or you just have to prove the agreement. And was Mr. Bean on the phone calls that she was on? Yeah, and one thing about those calls. Again, this is the call at Buddy Greg that we, we picked up online. She constantly asked Mr. She, I wouldn't say constantly, she, on at least two occasions that I can recall, I'm pretty sure it was two, asked him to kind of reassure Mr. Bean that this money is, you have not asked <clears throat> that it be rescinded, you know, you're not asking that the money be taken back. She's she's actively involving him in those conversations. And so they're working together in concert question mark. Based on my investigative experience, I would say they're working together in concert to defraud. That uh, poor 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 courtroom procedure here. All of this should have come straight out of Parker Still the moment that question was asked. I mean, does this guy even know what the elements are? He's got to have the prosecuting attorney, Cynthia Davidson, rescue him at just about every time he opens his mouth. It's like, it's like Cynthia Davidson's a kindergarten teacher and she's holding him by the hand the entire way. And this case isn't isn't supposed to be that involved, guys. It's really not. <clears throat> and they had an agreement <clears throat> which in a conspiracy you only have to prove that they had an agreement. <clears throat> Is there an agreement between those two individuals? <clears throat> based on my investigative experience, there would be an agreement based on their actions. <clears throat> wow, excuse me, I'm just all flemmed out today. Not a written agreement like we would think of, but yeah, based on what I can deduct, there's deduct again from these conversations. Who is this guy up there on the stand? Another question. And then to commit money laundering, which is in this case to transfer the money out of USAA to Whitney for the purchase of the RV, which is basically to get the money out of USAA so they can't get it back, question mark. That's correct. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Again, Cynthia Davidson's providing all the testimony here. Does that answer your questions? And the juror says, yes, thank you. Do we know anything about the relationship between Bean and the lawyer? And the question, giraffe? Yes. This, so I'm speculating a little bit here. I want to try to clarify when I do speculate. <laughs> uh, you don't offer speculation. Do you know anything about the relationship? It's a yes or a no question. Oh, is there a follow-up question? Well, what is that relationship? Huh, so here's going to come a bunch of speculation. 
At this arrest scene, there was an individual referred to as Heather on the phone who, who, another, there were so. When we arrest Mr. Bean, there's two other individuals there with him, a male and a female. They were, tried to give me the phone. There's a lady named Heather on here, an attorney who wants to talk. And actually, they gave me a piece of paper with her phone number and her phone number and her name on it. <laughs> with her phone number and her phone number and her name on it. Agent Jason Pack. What? This is the first time he mentions another, another agent, another person. Wow. Wow, on page 56, so with 21 pages left to go, we're going to actually name another agent. Agent Jason Pack and I on Friday night attempted to contact her. She said that she could not speak with us. Or she spoke briefly with us and told us that she could no longer talk due to planning military operations, something to that effect. Wow. We have subsequently learned that possibly, again, speculating that that comment meant, quote, military operations, unquote, to try to remove Mr. Bean from the Knox County Detention Center. That's what, again, what I deduct. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Are you fucking kidding me, guys? He starts this whole answer, response off with, I'm speculating here, and I want to clarify when I do speculate. And then there's this nonsense here, basically saying, I first learned about Heather when I arrested Randy. A couple people were there with Randy, and they gave me her phone number on a piece of paper. Later, Agent Jack, or Jason Pack and I, on Friday night, what, what date? attempted to contact her. She said that she could not speak with us, or she spoke briefly with us and told us that she could no longer talk due to planning military operations, something to that effect. We have subsequently learned that possibly, again, speculating that that comment meant, quote, military operations end quote, to try to remove Mr. Bean from the Knox County Detention Center. I thought he was in uh, Blount County Detention Center. Hasn't he been in Blount County the whole time? That's again what I deduct. Wow. Uh, there is only one reason for this, and this is to give the jury the false image that Randall and Heather are people who are involved with groups that can perform military operations to break people out of County detention centers? <laughs> wow. Wow. He starts off by saying he's speculating, offers a bunch of garbage, really. And then we have subsequently learned that possibly speculating military operations this is this is what it, we're totally speculating but we're assigning this meaning here to the term military operations and they they just want to 
affect the jurors' perceptions of Randall and Heather. That's the only reason for that. It's not based on any, any kind of fact. Uh, Miss Davidson, any other questions? And a juror speaks up. They, they, <clears throat> a couple of the brought out that in indictment it says <clears throat> jumbo CD and on your paper it says super. Does that matter that it's not? <clears throat> well, this is funny. A juror is pointing out more inconsistencies with their paperwork. And of course, you know, the prosecuting attorney is going to say, no, it doesn't because we, in the indictment, we're referring to jumbo CDs just in the, in the objective sense that they're large CDs. Any other questions? No response. Ms. Davidson, well, I will excuse you. Parker says, thank you. <clears throat> oh, I do have one quick question. A juror pops up. Sorry. I really have a problem trying to wrap around the idea that a fine institution that handles money all day long can accept somebody doing this and without batting an eye and open a CD for, what was that first one, 500000 in money? That they don't have any proof that there's 500000 to cover CD? And then it goes on to the 999000 if I go and use my debit card before I get back home, it's already taken out of my account. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> I can check my bank online and it's already gone. How does an electronic wiring fraud happen when I can't do it for $20 on a $20 Food City grocery bill? I mean, they know before I leave that aisle that I've got $20 in there to cover that bill. How does that happen? I mean, how? What a great question. <clears throat> oh, wow, look at Cynthia's response. This is gaslighting to the core. <clears throat> I don't know if that's a proper question for the consideration of the grand jury. I mean, the fact of the matter, we showed you evidence that it did happen in this case. <clears throat> what, what evidence was that? The, the testimony of this evidence was horrible. And as far as I know, all we have are screenshots that are purportedly the same screens that Randall would have been looking at on his device. Now, the fact that USAA may have been, you know, negligent in some way is really not relevant. Oh gosh, this just goes outer limits further and further the more we go. Wow, family. There's just simply evidence that this did occur and that Mr. Bean got the funds, basically stole the money. I mean, you know, it's similar thing where, you know, if somebody gives you somebody I mean, if an IRS check is mistakenly delivered to you in my name, Cynthia Davidson, and you go cash it, you know, the post office made a mistake, but you're at fault for cashing a check that didn't belong to you. This is not at all applicable or analogous, guys. Randy used his own name. And Randy claims that he used his social security number the testimony in here by Davidson and agreed with by Parker Still is that the number was Randy's social security number with one number that was different. And I have a feeling that that one number that's different is the only thing that they can really hang a fraud case on. And now they're gaslighting the jury with improper analogies. This is blatant, absolutely blatant, improper, uncalled for. Wow. Well, if the bank put the money in my account today, 
And Miss Davidson cuts the juror off. If it's not your money, you can't spend it. And the juror says, yeah, well, that's true. So it's his fault because he spent it? Well, no, he, he stole it. You know, he went through. And the juror cuts her off. He triggered the money going into his account. Miss Davidson, right. By putting in the fraudulent routing number, it's, hey, if the routing number was fraudulent, the transaction wouldn't have worked. The fraudulent accounting, uh, the fraudulent routing number and the account number, you know, attempting this. You know, it's unclear here whether or not fraudulent is just uh, describing the routing number or both the routing number and the account number by the way she's phrased her sentence. That's unclear. I mean, I have no doubt that he did many more. Miss Davidson says 40 times. The juror says a lot more. And there is a YouTube video out there as he testified explaining how to commit this type of fraud. You know, did, did the grand jury get to watch this YouTube video? I have a feeling that Randy is not describing this as fraud. This is how you get over on the system. Wow, they, they are just putting a full court deception press on the jury. So the juror continues. In other words, if he deposits $3,000 from the bank and they give you a slip, that says you've put in 300,000 in there, you can't spend that money, question mark. A juror says, oh, is that right, question mark? Miss Davidson says, any other factual questions? The, this juror is asking a question, this other one saying, oh, is that right? And Ms. Davidson saying, any other factual questions? Totally brushing these off. The juror says, are we having fun yet? Yeah, I know. And this, all this happened to y'all. It takes us usually months to investigate these things. Oh, wow, what a spontaneous statement, right, from Ms. Davidson. It, usually, it takes us usually months to investigate these things. Well, no shit, Ms. Davidson. That's how long it took me to investigate financial crimes. The fact that you're sitting in a grand jury within a week Offering all of this garbage testimony is suspicious in itself. And then, <clears throat> and then you're actually going to admit here <clears throat> that it usually takes months to investigate these things. The quality of your presentation in this courtroom definitely belies the fact that nobody investigated this. Any... Any other factual questions? No response. <clears throat> I'm going to excuse you. Whereupon the witness exited the grand jury room at approximately 4.19 p.m. Well, they almost made it 4.20. How interesting. End of proceedings. Well, here's the certificate from the county or the court reporter. Yeah, he was having sworn to keep secret the testimony before the grand jury. He hereby certifies that he is the certified court reporter who made machine shorthand notes of the foregoing proceedings at the time and place stated in the caption herein. So this is just boilerplate stuff. But he signs it. All right, what do we got here? This is the docket. All right, here's 
more docket entries. Okay, here's the arrest warrant for Randy and Heather. Here's the indictment. The grand jury charges as follows. Counts 1 through 5, wire fraud, 18 U.S.C. section 1343. At all times relevant to this indictment, United States Automobile Association, USAA, is the financial institution insured by the Federal Deposit and Insurance Corporation, FDIC, with a home office in San Antonio, Texas. USAA offers products in the insurance, banking, investing, real estate, and retirement arenas. Two, Federal Reserve Bank is a financial institution located in New York, New York. Three, Whitney Bank is an FDIC-insured financial institution with a home office in Louisiana. The defendant, Randall Keith Bean, was a member and account holder of USAA. The defendant, Randall Keith Bean, did not have an account ending in the, with the last four of 11.35. I'm so surprised in, the, in an indictment, I would think they would use the app, the full account number. The absolute full account number. And and they put which branch of the Federal Reserve uh, that routing number was going to as well. Th this should be really specified. All wire transfers discussed herein went through the automated clearinghouse and Fedwire. So we still have to dig through the policies and procedures and uh, the authorization process for ACH and Fedwire. Heather Ann Tucci Giraffe is not a duly licensed attorney in the states of Tennessee and Washington authorized to represent others in legal matters. The scheme. In or around July 2017, Randall Keith Bean and others known and unknown to the grand jury embarked upon a scheme through which they sought to obtain and access funds that did not belong to them by exploiting the online banking options available through USAA. The scheme involved the use of a valid routing number ending in 1452 belonging to Federal Reserve Bank and a fictitious bank account number ending in 1135. It was part of the scheme to make numerous attempts using the valid routing numbers and fictitious bank account number to purchase jumbo certificates of deposit CDs until a transfer was completed. It was further part of the scheme to immediately liquidate the CDs and then transfer proceeds from the CDs to Bean's personal bank account to purchase assets and pay personal expenses with funds that did not belong to him, including the purchase of a 2017 Integra Cornerstone 45B 45-foot diesel motorhome. It was further part of the scheme that Heather Antucci Giraffe purported to be Bean's attorney in order to induce, coerce, and convince certain financial institutions to accept the fraudulently obtained funds for payments of a 2017 Integra Cornerstone 45B 45-foot diesel motorhome. In furtherance of the scheme, and to accomplish the ends thereof, the defendant, Randall Keith Bean, and others known and unknown to the grand jury, used the following means, among others. Defendant Randall Keith Bean was a member and account holder at USAA. The defendant, Randall Keith Bean, did not hold an account ending in 1135 at the Federal Reserve Bank. The defendant, Randall Keith Bean, obtained from others, known and unknown to the grand jury, the valid routing number of the Federal Reserve Bank. That is the routing number ending in 1452. The defendant, Randall Keith Bean, used his mobile device to access his USAA account. The defendant, Randall Keith Bean, would and did conduct electronic financial transactions, including the purchase and attempted purchase of jumbo CDs through USAA in which the defendant Randall Keith Bean falsely represented the funding source by using a fictitious account number that is account number ending in 1135. 
The vast majority of CDs the defendant Randall Keith Bean attempted to purchase through the scheme were returned as invalid because there was no valid account number entered. However, two CDs were funded by USAA Bank and liquidated by the defendant, Randall Keith Bean, before USAA could reverse the transaction. The defendant, Randall Keith Bean, would and did use funds fraudulently acquired through the CD purchase scheme to make purchases for his own personal benefit to include the purchase of a 2017 Integra Cornerstone 45B, 45-foot diesel motorhome. Allegations set forth in paragraphs 1 through 13 are incorporated herein for reference for the purpose of alleging violations of 18 U.S.C. section 1343. On or about the dates set forth below within the Eastern District of Tennessee and elsewhere, the defendant, Randall Keith Bean, for the purposes of executing and attempting to execute the above described scheme and artifice to defraud purchase jumbo CDs with funds that did not belong to him by using routing numbers that did not belong to his accounts and fictitious bank accounts and in doing so did knowingly transmit and cause to be transmitted by means of wire communication in interstate commerce signals and sounds including without limitation the following and then we've got three counts here uh, the first one on these are all on July 6th. First one's going in the amount of $500,000 from the Federal Reserve to his bank or CD purchase 1463 number. And then that CD was closed. And the funds in the amount of $499,909.59 were transferred via wire to one of Bean's personal bank accounts at USAA, account number ending in 3062. And then Bean transferred funds he did not own via wire using Federal Reserve New York routing number 1452 and fictitious account number 1135 to purchase CD number 4623 in the amount of $999,000. Oh, two more counts. Okay, so he closed out the largest CD here of the $999,000. Took $998,819.36 cents were transferred via wire to one of Bean's personal bank accounts at USAA 3062. And then Bean transferred the sum of $493,110.68 via wire from Bean's personal account number 4026 to Whitney Bank account number 4960 belonging to BG, I guess that's a buddy Greg, whose identity is known to the grand jury for the purpose of 2017 Integra Cornerstone 45B 45 foot diesel motorhome, all in violation of Title 18 USC Section 1343. Count 6 Bank Fraud USC 1344. 18 USC 1344. The allegations contained above in paragraphs 1 through 15 are incorporated herein by reference for the purpose of alleging a violation of Title 18, United States Code, Section 1344. So this is just very similar to the previous section. And look at this, this uh, last page here. The foreperson of the jury signed this, apparently a true bill. Signature was redacted. Uh, I don't know what policies are with grand juries, but the testimony that's offered in here and the way they brushed off the jurors' questions, the way they offered garbage in the guise of answering their questions, the absolute blatant substandard testimony and inability to recall facts that if you were the lead investigator on a case 
you would know like the back of your hand. A lot of perception shaping comments directed at the jury by both Parker and Cynthia Davidson. They start off by falsely telling them and putting the idea in their head that the Federal Reserve is the bank of the United States government. It has nothing to do with the government. It's a private corporation that hijacked our monetary system with the Federal Reserve Act of 1913. And so they start off with that impression and then they go through, they offer no real evidence and the jury picks it apart. And when they're hot on the trail, they get gaslit. They get told that grand juries shouldn't be evaluating those types of questions. And I didn't see the judge speak up once to put a stop to any of it. The jurors had to tell Parker and Cynthia how to run this more smoothly. Their visual aids were out of focus and hard to read and small. They had to ask them to zoom it in so that it could be in better focus so that they could read them. To use screenshots. They don't mention who it was that USAA that contacted them. There's no fucking way that an indictment was issued off of this grand jury hearing with the court systems working as they are supposed to, as they have been purported to work to us. No wonder this indictment was sealed. No wonder these warrants were sealed. Is this why U.S. Magistrate Judge is crossed out and Deputy Clerk written in? Well, I certainly don't know what to make of this guy. Is this... This entire hearing was completely laughable. Garbage. And it's a blatant miscarriage of justice that an indictment was ever issued. And the big question is, why was this indictment sealed? Who approved the sealing of this indictment? Well, if you got any love, light, or links for me, you can send them to lunacy, L-U-N-A-S-E-E, -E, at protonmail.com. I guess we've got a detention hearing transcript from Knoxville uh, to read next. So it'll be interesting to read some testimony that's spoken from Heather. And just see how the energy of that compares to the types of observations that we made in this hearing. Wow, this is beyond outer limits, guys. All right, I love you a lot. You're really being a great family. I didn't know that I had so many absolutely brilliant and intelligent people in my family. Thank you for the emails and the intelligent comments and all the links. And look down in the comments of my last video there's something unrelated. Uh, it's about the weather. And there's some interesting observations that this 
YouTube channel is putting out. So go find those and take a look at it. I don't know quite, quite what to make of it yet. Peace out, guys.